Okay, it hurt me very much to see so many students struggling on this last exam with this simple reaction where we take an amino acid uh, monomer and we condense it with another amino acid to form a dipeptide. tripeptide or any polypeptide, the condensation reaction is the same. Okay, for example, if we're looking at an amino acid, we typically have, we draw it, we begin with an alpha carbon, that would be easiest. It has a hydrogen on it and it has the defining R group. A methyl group for an alanine, a, an isobutyl group for isoleucine, or a phenyl group for tyrosine. It also has an alpha carboxyl group. Okay, and this is going to be charged the way that I'm writing it. And then the fourth bond on the chiral center is chiral carbon is the amine group. It is also charged. The pH of that I'm drawing these at is about 7, 7.4. And it's important to know this because each of these functional groups, the alpha carboxyl group and the alpha amine group, have the, have the ability to act as an acid or base. That is, to accept a proton uh, in the case of a base or donate a proton in the case of an acid. And so in each case we can accept or donate a proton, but it depends on the pH that the solution is that these free amino acids are in. And we determine that particular point at which the functional group will gain or lose a proton as its pK, or actually the negative log of the equilibrium constant between the protonated and the unprotonated or deprotonated functional group. So in this case, the pK for the alpha carboxyl group, or pK1, is 2.2. And that for pK2, for the amine, alpha amine group, is 9.4. So, the condensation reaction involves a reaction of one amino acid with another. Okay, so we take a similar amino acid and we react it with another amino acid. Condensation implies that we will be generating water. We will be eliminating water as a product of the reaction. Where does that come from? Well, it has to come from these molecules and in every case it will be it will come from the two hydrogens will come from this amine and one oxygen will come from the carboxyl group and so H2O gives us the water what are we left with? we're left with a dipeptide or the carboxyl group now missing one of the oxygens forms a covalent bond with the nitrogen now missing two of the hydrogen groups and 
the rest of the molecule. Now the um, the charge associated with the hydro with the oxygen on the carbonyl group is lost when that oxygen is removed, and the same is true with the um, amine terms. So we end up with three bonds on the nitrogen instead of four. It becomes neutral. And we end up with four bonds on the carbons. Um, on the second amino acid. Now again, we're at a pH of 7.4. So the product of the condensation reaction is this dipeptide and the amine, am, uh, amide, sorry, amide bond that forms between the carbon, carbonyl carbon and the alpha nitrogen has a uh, double bond characteristics. That means that it is actually shorter than your typical single covalent bond. So rotation is restricted and it's limited to this bond between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon and the nitrogen. Okay, this is the phi bond, and this is referred to as the psi bond. And their angles are what we measure when measuring the folding of a protein. The C terminus, is a, as the carboxyl terminus is often referred, is charged, because remember we had a pH of 7.4, and the amine terminus, or the N terms, is, at, is also charged because we're at this pH of 7.4. As long as we're below, or as long as the pH is below the pK of the amine terminus, or N terminus, it will remain protonated. just as we are above the pK of the carboxyl group, pK is 2.2, it will remain deprotonated. Only if we go below 2.2 will the carboxyl group gain a proton. And only if we go above 9.4 will this amine group lose a proton. Okay, and those are the essentials of a condensation reaction. Again, the alpha carbonyl group here is susceptible to an additional condensation with multiple amino acids, and as well is the N terminus. It's also susceptible to condensation with the carbonyl group. Alright, I hope that helps a little bit.